Proverbs chapter 14, I want to continue in this chapter with you as we begin a new week in the Word of God. It's going to be a busy week for us as a congregation, uh, but a good week as we embark on another VBS. I spoke with Brother Niemeyer this morning. He's excited to come, teach our adult class. Teachers are making their final uh, preparations. It's always an exciting week for sure. Let's be praying that a lot of good will come from it. Keep inviting um, and hopefully we'll have a good number joining us uh, this week. Our kids will be encouraged, uh, will instill courage and strength and help them better connect where true strength and true courage comes from, that being from God and his word. But for our time together this morning, I want us to read verses 28 through 30. Let's read it together. Proverbs 14, begin with me at verse 28. It says, in a multitude of people is a king's glory, in the, part, in the dearth of people is a prince's ruin. He who is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who is quick-tempered exalts folly. A tranquil heart is life to the body. Passion is rottenness uh, to the bones. Uh, there's certainly much we could say there from verse 30, from verse 28. Certainly, we, we recognize the, just the great danger uh, of envy and the effect that it can have on us if we allow it to fester. But I want us to focus uh, this morning on verse 29. Um, he who is slow to anger has great understanding. Um, I, I think this certainly applies to all of us. You know, one's ability to control one's response to sometimes being provoked is, is certainly a, a sign of spiritual maturity. Uh, Self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. Self-control certainly was something that was exemplified in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And certainly we understand and probably have some regrets personally. We've allowed our anger to influence reaction. We maybe didn't give any thought to said things, did things out of anger that we had no business saying or doing. You know, the world has a tendency, I've found, to excuse these words and actions. It's not uncommon for people to give themselves a pass. After all, you made me mad. or So this is how I responded. And that's the world's way. We, that's not God's way. You know, over in Colossians chapter 3, I want to spend a little bit of time with you this morning. You know, in a beautiful way, Paul describes the new man in Christ. And I want you to just listen to verse 5 starting. We'll just read a, a, a few verses. Colossians 3 at verse 5, Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. For it is because of these things that the wrath of God will come upon the sons of disobedience. And in them you also once walked when you were living in them. But now you also put them aside. Let's listen to this. Put them all aside. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, abusive speech from your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices and put on the new self who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. A renewal in which there's no distinction between Greek and Jews, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, freeman, but Christ is all and in all. Paul said, put things like anger aside as a new man in Christ. He goes on in verse 12 to say, so as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another, forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Brethren, that's a better way. You know, well, we need to think soberly uh, before we respond, before we act, before we say things. He who is slow to anger, says, has great understanding, but he who is quick-tempered exalts folly. To be quick-tempered is foolish. To respond or to act, react to one is impulsive. Impulsively, it's just foolish. You know, truth is, there, there are some things that should make us angry. There, there are, are things that angers God. Typically, I, I think our anger is rooted in selfishness, though. We get mad and act out when we believe we've been slighted. That's selfishness, and we need to recognize that. But that being said, there are things that should anger us. People who lead others astray spiritually angers me. Children being abused angers me. The rich oppressing the poor in, in, in instances, it angers me. There are things that should anger us, but what then? Ephesians 4, another passage describing the new man in Christ in verse 26 says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And then verse 27, and do not give the devil an opportunity. I love that last part. Don't you give the devil an opportunity. Here's the truth. When we are angry, we are vulnerable. It's easy to say things and do things that we wouldn't normally do and say when we're angry. We need to address our anger. We need to ask ourselves if it's selfish. We need to pray about it. We need to be more empathetic, be more compassionate, be quicker uh, to forgive. But understanding when we are angry, we are giving the devil an opportunity. But here's what I want to leave this with. 
Anger is never legitimate justification for sin. We can and must control ourselves. That is wise. Associate being quick tempered with foolishness because it is. Some good reminders for us. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Father, as we begin a new word, a new week in your word, Father, we pray and we pray that, that good will be done as a result, Father. We pray that those of us participating in this, that we would continue to grow in, in knowledge and in strength and courage, Father, as we go out into this world and face all that we encounter, Father. Father, we, we, we are mindful right now of the Hart family, Fentress family, to ask you to be with Kathy, and Kelly, and Kim, and their family's father as they uh, mourn the loss of, of, of Mary and Father. Certainly, this is a great loss, but we rejoice, Father, as, as she has departed this earth and and Father, just as she's in paradise, we believe, as a result of her faithfulness in you, your grace and mercy extended towards her, Father. We're so thankful for Mary and for her example, for her kindness, for her love for you and for her love for others, for her family, Father. And we just ask you to be with this good family right now. Father, we ask you to continue to be with the Weedman family as they care for their loved ones. We continue to pray for Sister Cheney Adams. We ask you to be with Tommy and Betty and the entire family, Father. But certainly this is a trying time for the good progress that's already been made, Father. We're so very thankful. Uh, be with all of those who are treating her. May she be rid of this cancer, Father, completely, quickly, Father, if it be your will. Father, be with all of us who are struggling with various things, Father, as we encounter this sinful world on a daily basis, Father. Help us to be, to be mindful of all the various traps that Satan puts before us. Help us to be wise. Help us to put you first. Help us to serve you, Father, as we continue to think about and consider all the good that you've done for us. Father, bless us this day with opportunities to do good. We ask you to be with our upcoming BBS this week that much good would be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.